Hey guys, do I have something cool to show you this episode? I hope this lightning storm blows over. Where were we? Anyway, I'm digging around in the vault, and you have seen this one before. I got so much going on around here. There's Chick Flick Teal Pointer. Be lost without you. Anyway. If you all remember, this one is called The Prep. It was made in 1940 by Harmony. It's an arch top. What's that red stuff on there? Oh, yeah, I'm going to take a beating again. Because when I fixed up this guitar, there were cracks that wide. And everybody's like, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Well, I was using a Marvel Mystery Oil can. And I made these Frankensteinish patches because the cracks were that big. What are you going to do? You're going to sit around and cry. But everybody got so squeamish, except my friends, the Bonnevilles in Belfast, Ireland, UK. Do you know about the Bonnevilles? Well, do you, punk? You don't? Well, that's on you. I'm going to give you a link below. I think I'll give you a link up there. Uh, and you're going to you're gonna love their music. If you don't, then don't subscribe, which you haven't anyway. Anyway, give me a like. Give me a subscribe. Anyway, you recognize this guitar because we used it in a set of episodes about how to steam off a neck. Remember that? I showed you how to build a steamer. I showed you how to build a pulling jig. And there's a playlist up there right about now that shows you how to do this so this one sat around for a while and it, time has come where we are going to fix this neck because guess what remember we steamed it off so here's what we're going to do we are going to get this neck at the right angle we're going to build up the neck we are going to get into my box of bridges Ooh, ah, don't cover it we're going to find a pickup truck pick up I don't want to start over we're going to pick up some matchbooks and put them on the neck we are going to refret the neck we're going to put some great tuners on here we're just going to Mississippi this thing up and it's going to scream and then when it does you're going to want it but it's going to be Def Leppard then it's going to be too late because I'm going to send this over the ocean, and you're going to see it showing up on a Bonneville stage in, that's right, Belfast, Ireland, UK. If, if you don't say UK, I don't know what you say. But once again, the Bonnevilles, they are not squeamish about things that freak people out like these scars on this thing. Now, I do want to tell you that Bob Log the Third is playing in Belfast, Ireland, UK, on March 30th. Now, if you're watching this five years from now, then you just go there and wait anyway. Anyway, guys, in all reality, this is going to be the first time you have me explain to you what it's going to take to get this neck back on here and get it set at the right pitch where the action is not that tall and um, you're going to learn quite a bit. And I'm going to act like I've done this a thousand times before. And you're actually going to believe that. And I will also indoctrinate you to the fact that all guitars should look like that. So that said, let's get to the bench. I got a timeline because I heard boats are slow. And I got to get this thing over there. Let's get to the bench. Okay, let's, uh, let's have a little look before we start here on the major stuff and talk about what this like look like before this is actually going to be a double before because you saw it before we put all these cleats and everything and in this big scary frankenstein patch on here the problem is that this guitar was so beat up the body was loose the back of it was off and the guitar had twisted 
and when you bring everything back together, what ends up happening is something's got to give. Remember the old teeter-totter, yin and yang thing? Let's see how I do here. Oh, look at that. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, mother hands free. Anyway, let's come up here a little bit, and I'll show you on the guitar. Susan, look at that puppy. Spins right around. So, this was the problem area up here, right up here. There is a block that sits in here, and one that sits on the top, and mysteriously, they're connected right here. So it's about that wide, about as wide as them huge monster truck tires on a pickup truck's worth about seven or fifty dollars. That's pretty common around here. Anyway, what ends up happening is when the body starts cutting loose here or here, it starts twisting up here on this block. And when that block has to come back together and we glue it all back up and get everything right, with everything dried out, things start splitting. You get splits in the body here. You get splits. Let's see if the camera will catch that one. Yeah, so both the tail block and the head block were cut loose on this guitar. So when we put everything back together, there was a lot of splits and cleats and all that kind of thing to put back together. And if you look down in the hole right here in that F hole, you're going to see there's a, it looks like a surgical center in there. Anyway. The neck on this thing was so flat that the string height was literally that high. So we had to do a neck reset, but prior to that, everywhere you look, everywhere you look, I don't know what that show was, but anyway, there are cleats everywhere all over this thing. So you'll remember, hover your mouse up there, we did an episode playlist called Neck Reset, and this video is going to go in there. But anyway, the neck came off of this thing. It came off clean. We drilled a couple of holes at the 13th, 14th fret, 12th fret, whatever, where it connected to the body, and you can see up there, there's a joint right here that this all fits together. Now, in order for us to reset the neck, we need to pitch it at an angle like this. And that means that there's got to be some wood coming out of here or something. So the first thing we got to do is take a look at what all that means in terms of the way things are laid out. I want you to notice that this part of the guitar sunk down a little bit. This block here is very solid, but once you start getting things cutting loose and cracking, everything wants to pitch down. So there's a little pitch down in here that needs to be built up, but I think we have all the cracks stabilized. So let me change the angle on this so you can see what we have to do. Okay, guys, I am living real dangerously here. Uh, fortunately, I've got this Stumac workstation to help me out, but this thing is literally hanging here by the weight of the body on the neck. So here's the problem. The way it is right now, if I take a straight edge and set it on top of the frets and look at what kind of room I have, if you look right here where the arch top crests up, my floating bridge is going to go right here. I literally have this much room for a floating bridge. That's not going to work. Plus, I want to put a pickup on here somewhere, and ideally, on these old things, if you put it right up on the neck, it, it, it doesn't do the best. Ideally, you want them somewhere here around the top of the F hole. Um, you can't see that angle, but trust me. Now, what I need to do then is I need to address a couple problems. We've talked about the student instrument level uh, fretboard where it's basically one uh, layer thick. Some other guitars that are a little bit better, higher 
surprised to have something like this underneath them. So what we're going to do is we are going to figure out how to bring uh, the neck up about that much. This is uh, seven millimeters or a quarter of an inch. And we're going to get this set up here, which will move uh, the neck up just a little bit in that joint. And it will also allow us, once that's up, then we can pivot it by taking a little bit off right here, which allows the neck angle to tilt back. Now, let me get this set up without dropping everything and letting it crash to the floor. Be right back. Okay, let me show you what I have done here. I have taken a piece of this craft stock just for um, an example. We're going to do something a little bit better than that. We're actually going to use something that's as wide as this. We're going to cut the taper to match the fretboard. But you can see that by putting that piece under there, that it has pitched the neck up in the joint here. You see that? And there's a gap right there. You see that gap right there? That gap, mysteriously, if you take a straight edge and match that gap like so and come down the neck and you trim that right there, you're going to find out that a fraction of a millimeter is all you need to trim off here. So typically what you would do without putting this wood in here is you would measure how you want the neck set. It would come down to where it was. You can see that line. Fortunately, the joint in there isn't down much lower. Now, don't kid yourself. We're not just going to glue this. We're going to have to shim everything inside of here. But we're going to take and trim this down and get this to sit flat. And then let me throw this in and show you what it did to the neck angle. Now, you want to remember that this right here, can we zoom in on that neck angle right there? Yeah. You can see that that is not nested properly. So when this sits down in here and we take a little bit off, it's going to drop back down. But you remember we had that much room to put a bridge on there. Let's zoom back out. Yeah, the other zoom out. Now let's see what putting that piece of wood in there and affecting the neck angle did. So we put this back on top of the frets. Now look over there. Look how much room we have right there. All kinds of room for a pickup, all kinds of room for a bridge, a decent bridge. And I want to use this adjustable bridge. This is a good one. It has intonation points. See? And I can put this here. And what do you know? Without doing any work to the bridge, I'm almost there right there. I've got very little room right here. Now, I am going to have to do some work on the nut up here for sure because I'm going to replace these frets and they're going to be a little bit bigger. But you kind of get the idea here. I've got plenty of room to flatten this out once the frets are on and take some off the bottom of that bridge to get everything level. And then when it comes time, I can adjust it up once the nut is set. That's basically how we're going to do this. Okay, before I tear this down, I wanted to give you a little bit closer look. Of course, we take our intonation stick, go to the center of the 12th fret, double that, end up here. The bridge is going to go right there. Again, we have to trim this down, flatten it out, sand it. I gave you an episode about putting, uh, fitting a bridge to a, one of these old arch tops been busted up and glued. It's right up there right about now. But I think there's a little bit of angle here. We take the straight edge and sit right there. It is completely sitting flat on the frets. There's still a little bit of pitch to take care of at the front end of the heel, which will make this pop up 
the neck angle up a little bit and this is going to put us right where we need to be which is on those intonation points again if I take it to the bridge now where the strings are going to go my action is very low up on this end and it's I would say three millimeters down here now we're going to have to adjust this up put a different nut on it because the frets I'm going to put in here are going to be a little bit taller but that kind of gives you the idea where you need to be now if I were not going to use a piece of wood under here then it would be a little bit different story I might be taking a millimeter millimeter and a half and drawing a line right here and cutting the heel of the guitar back one more thing before we leave this part now let's pop this neck out of here and take a look at this block of wood that just fell down now this may look okay out there in TV land but what you've got is you've got a dip down here and the arch top works its way around here so I don't want to just leave this here like so I want this whole thing to be supported so my piece of wood is going to be, have to be cut as wide as this is and it's going to have to incorporate that dovetail there has to um, because here's why if you have pieces of wood stuck here or just here whatever wherever the pressure is skipping a gap that gap leaves room for pressure to be magnified somewhere else and you're going to have splits and everything so what I have to do is I have to put the piece of wood get it cut to the width and to the length and then I can take a piece of pencil in a washer and mark the curve that's going to pick up here and here and then what I'll end up doing is if it's th thicker here or thinner here it's actually the opposite this part will have to be worked down to follow this curve where this actually sits flat and mates up against the fingerboard if you don't do that you're going to have gaps wherever you have a gap pressure gets intensified out here now that block is about this big so once you get out here you're into no man's land and that's where those cracks will manifest themselves this guitar is going to be tore up from the floor up on stage so I have to make sure that it never falls apart last thing I want to show you here is when I move that neck up to this place then all of a sudden there's going to be a lot of open gap here so I'm going to have to take some shimming material and fill that in and then finally believe it or not I'm going to run a bolt through this thing so nobody will ever be able to tear it off of course I'm going to use hide glue so in case you ever do need to take it apart we can heat it up and steam it off and pull that bolt out but I am going to use a thread insert here that's mounted and compensated for and that way I don't like screws they tend to work loose after a while finally I want to show you this thing like some of the guitars we've been working on lately has tone bars they follow the edge of the fingerboard all the way to the back of the body so there's not much on cross brace in here and you can tell when you look at this thing when they age the wood tends to settle in where the tone bars are you can see it right there okay enough talking I will show you when I'm done all right let me catch you up here a little bit we've been doing some work here and some trimming and making scrap apparatus and whatever but I do need to keep you relevant um, you know anybody that lives in California besides me because y'all out there hear things like oh there was a fire oh there's a flood there's a wildfire there's a blizzard and everybody in California gets all these calls like was that by you no it wasn't by you there's only one place one where all that stuff is likely to happen that's where I live in non-stop action acting California so if you're calling somebody in California have them give you some proof now you people in California that want to lie I can help you when people are calling you about the blizzard of 
23. Yeah, guess what? I have a few limited uh, snowman kits. Some of them complete with Juniperus Californica and some other local scrap radis. These actually look believable. If you want that special gift for someone special, that's right. You get them the can autographed snowman. That's right. Okay, back to reality. I'm doing a photo shoot with these this afternoon. That's right. So anyway, back to this. I told you the neck sat too low. So we need to change the angle on the neck. And one way to do that is we can bridge this up. Let me make sure the camera angle is right. So we made this piece. Notice it says body and neck. That slips over there like that. You see that? And then this fits down in here. So what that does I think it covered this amply before. It changes the angle of the neck. When you raise this up, it's going to raise this part down here up. And what it does when you pitch the angle this way to get that neck to squat down like this, to get the strings up higher so the bridge is higher, this part right here, there's going to be a relationship between we took a little less than a millimeter off right there. We took a straight edge and went back up to here and then carved that down. So that, that's where we got our neck pitch forward. But the problem is, is this part right here now is going to be hitting the back of the joint pocket like so when it squats down. And so we're going to need that little gap that's right there. There's a relationship between that gap and how much we're going to need to take off of right there. So pulling a little bit off here, you don't want to make it too sloppy because you want a lot to glue with. Now, as you do that and everything crashes to the floor, you got to figure out that if everything is not equal across here that there's probably going to be one part at the back that's a little bit higher than the other so we cut these shims put them on the body side like that glue those up with hide glue put a couple on or whatever we need to do and then we're going to take them to the belt sander and get that just where it needs to be and then finally i got all this stuff buried under my snowman scrap apparatus my sales kits yeah, this is a multi-dimensional international business, son. Anyway, we'll finally put this on here. I know that this has uh, adhesive on the back, but we're going to use tape. And once we get everything put together um, with all of our shims and everything, then we're going to sand this down and get everything just right and then glue everything up. And I'll show you that process when we get to it. Okay, looking ahead quickly, I want to put a pickup on uh, this guitar obviously and we've talked about the tone bars that run here and here that you can find simply by putting your finger here and measuring and then taking a piece of wire I've shown you before how to determine where the tone bars are but in order to put a pickup on here I would have to cut a hole in here or mount them to the tone bars there's another easy way to do this especially given what we're doing this is a Gretsch pickup. It mounts onto the side of the neck. And um, the way that we've configured this, the spacer, that's going to give us the pitch back on our neck and get our fingerboard up off the deck of the guitar, well, let me show you something pretty cool here. This will fit under the fingerboard here. And this can mount here like so, simply by cutting out the section where the mounts are. You see that? Lining that up. That way this thing will ride along here. It's the exact same width. It will be right at the level 
of the fingerboard and we can do that without making any cuts on the fingerboard itself pretty tricky you'll see this a little bit later in the show okay guys let's catch up I have this the whole thing mocked up meaning the neck is in place it it's where it needs to be the angles are right and all that but it's not glued up now there's a bolt running through the neck of this thing into the head block and I'm going to show you a couple tricks there I really don't need to do that but given where this guitar is going and how rough everybody's going to be on it yeah I do need to do that I don't ever want it cutting loose now I told you that I was going to put a Gretsch pickup that mounts to the side of the neck or the fingerboard um, I showed you how we built some sh a shim to go underneath there that's going to kind of give us the elevation we need this started off as a student thin uh, fingerboard which isn't desirable for us so I've actually moved this thing up in the pocket about as much as my neighbor at the Super Bowl of motocross has moved up the volume on that whatever it is they're driving anyway so the moral of the story here is I'm going to take the knot now you want to remember I pulled a fret out of here to steam the neck off I'm going to replace the frets all of them so there's one that's just a tad higher but the moral of the story is you can see here these marks right here I've marked the intonation which means to the middle of the 12th fret middle of the 12th fret to here which tells us where a floating uh, pickup is going to be it's got intonation points it's a good um, floating bridge not a pickup but you can see that the action on this thing is lining up just right it's not up here it's not way down here the uh, floating bridge is bottomed out I can always bring it up but let me show you how I got to here because there's a lot going on oh before I forget yeah we got the hide glue heater going on um, it's cold outside so we want to make sure that that's good but let's take a look at what we've got here so real quick here I want you to see a couple of things again I built a shim it is tapered right there and this Gretsch pickup goes here I want you to notice that there are holes here that are mounted to the narrowed off part of the shim here's a mock-up like it so it mounts right there I want you to notice that there is an Allen headed bolt right here going into the neck and that is what will hold this on plus all kinds of hide glue let's dismantle this thing and show you what I had to now do we're probably gonna have a disaster here because I have all kinds of things to show you but I've loosened up this Allen bolt, which is about that long. You're going to want to know where your threads are and how everything lines up. Now, when I pull out this pickup, you'll see that I've calculated with tape and marking things where the wiring needs to go down into the body. You see that? Other than that, I don't have to drill a hole, but I marked everything off with the placement you see the lines there now when I pick out the neck you can see that this fits pretty tight and the holes for the pickup are already drilled if you put the neck on and glue up everything and then try to drill your holes it's going to be a nightmare so one of the holes I have a pencil mark right there and I left it that way on purpose aka Pee Wee Herman style so before I put it on the body I am just going to drill the pilot hole like that that way I don't have to worry about it later now 
the tricky part there's all kinds of holes here and this notice is wedge shaped which means it fits back in here like this so there's a lot to do to get the bolt to stay and be held to the neck I don't use screws so let's take a look at this if I can keep everything from falling apart this is called a T-nut. You see that there? So, you'll notice that there are chick flick teal screws on the T-nut, and that the T-nut is indented down into the head block of the guitar, and it has screws, but all of that has to be below the surface of the back of the pocket. Do you see that? So you've seen me use these T-nuts before. I put them in license plate guitars to hold the license plate onto the frame. They're like this and they have a hole in the center uh, and then your screw or bolt or whatever you want in the case of the guitar we're building right now can fit in there. So the idea here is is if we mount this like so and use the screws to hold it when the neck pocket pulls in and we run this bolt in the back of the neck let me see if I can do this without knocking everything over this part right here will seat up against there and everything will work to hold itself together but it's kind of tricky to get this to work let me use a couple other parts to show you how. So the first thing you, you're going to want to do is realize that everything has to be mounted and at the right position this way, this way, and this way to get this to work. So first thing you're going to do is at the front of the neck, you're going to find out where the center is. On the back, bear with me, you're going to want to be high enough up on this. You don't want to drill this right here because this will split out. The more you go this way, the more leverage it is to pull this back. Now, we've already trimmed this at an angle. You can see that. So, here's what you do. You start off by dropping the neck numerous times. You start off with a very small pilot bit. And you drill through here, okay? And you make sure you end up where you want to be on the back. This one doesn't have a wedge, but you want to make sure you're in the middle. If you drill crooked, you're going to be way out here. That's not what you want. So, once you get your pilot set, then you clamp everything together. Of course, by then, you will have made all of this. You'll have everything mounted the way you want. And... You clamp that down and then you take a longer bit and drill through the whole thing until you get a mark right here into the head block of the guitar. Again, this all has a line up like this, see? Now, once that's done, you're going to take a Forstner bit. Let me move the camera here just a little bit. So you will have a hole that is the size of this bit right here. That will be your center bit. The next thing you need to do, the very next thing you do, is you have a Forstner bit. You see it's got a point on it that is the same, just slightly bigger than your T-nut. You're going to take the Forstner bit and drill down into here enough to bury the surface of the T-nut and the screws that will hold it in. Once you've got that in place, you can use a bolt or something to drop it in there and make sure everything's okay. And then hold that in place and use your small bit to build drill pilot holes for those screws that fit in right here. You follow me? Once that's done, you're going to take a larger bit and drill a hole that will fit that will house this. It's okay if it's a little bit bigger than this so it can tilt or 
fine adjust, but that is how you put that in there. Once that's done, then you put these bolts on here, and no matter how hard this pulls against it, because this part will now be sitting flush against here, it will not come out. It just will not come out. So, once that's done, then you can go back to work on this part of your neck. Um, remember, you start to get the curve up in here. It's going to be harder to drill, but you drill a little bit bigger and bigger hole that will hold the bolt. And then finally, you don't drill it so big that, that it, it will accept this whole head, but you drill in to the point where the end of your hole right here is only deep enough to house the head and then the rest of the hole is smaller and it all bolts together. That's how that works. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a little bit more tape here and I am going to glue this thing up. I want to show you something pretty cool. If you haven't seen one of these, this is a glue, a glue syringe. You just basically take it apart like so and you can put hide glue in it like so pour it in there not too much you don't really want to use any more hide glue than you need to you pop that back on and when your hide glue is in here you could actually take this and it would fit into the holes you drilled if you hadn't put uh, a fret back in so you remember the holes we drilled uh, in the 14th or 15th fret right here to line up with this. You can actually take this with hot hide glue and inject it in there till it fills up. You start to see stuff coming out of here. But again, the last thing I'm going to do is put that bolt on. I do not want to really depend on the bolt that much. It's going to keep things uh, tight and solid. But let's glue this up. Again, I got my hide glue heater. Love this thing. Clean up for water, hide glue right here. And I'm going to glue this up, and then as it's tightening up, I'm going to be looking at it, making sure everything is right. This tape on here, um, uh, I can use that for reference. You, the last thing you want to do is end up with a neck that's pitched off this way or is tilted a little bit this way. So if you're going to use these shims, you want to make sure that they're you don't want one side to be bigger or smaller or higher or whatever, but you can see that that's tapered and this will all fit right together as long as I don't hit the camera. There we go. Oh, before I forget, we have virtually raised up out of the pocket here a little bit, which is equidistant to the shim that we put into the neck here. So figure that out. I've taken everything I've drilled and made some fines out of it that are the same wood that I can use to patch that up and fill that in and basically move everything up. I got a couple pieces of shim material that I can put that are this long if I need to put those in there. Um, what else? Oh, I've taken off the tuners. I've put them in a bag uh, that says 1940 prep. Uh, we're going to put a set of Gibson Deluxe tuners on this thing right here. And I've got the escutcheons and everything. So I, I did the head work on that already. I also plugged up the old holes. Somebody else had had different tuners on here before and already plugged up those holes. But I used glue and toothpicks and then filed those down. And I already um use the step bits. Step bits are really really handy um, and made the holes big enough for the escutcheons. Uh, we're going to cover this up. I've already cut yeah the piece of Marvel Mystery Oil. That's what the headstock is going to look like. You've seen how I do this before and most importantly Tammy has already signed it. We're going to end up with the triangle of uh, Reuben Lacey's son house and Alan Wilson some here relic wood on the neck, but um, That's it I'm going to want to tape this off finally and Start spreading glue. I keep chatting a lot. I, I put the brush. This is a 
flux brush that people use when they're sweating copper pipe, but I am going to glue this onto the fingerboard and not onto the top of the guitar. So the first thing I want to, you want to remember when you're using hide glue, it skims up on the top. You don't want that. So let's get everything glued here. Just remember, this part is going to sit up against there. There's no reason to glue that. What you're trying to glue here is actually where everything comes together on the sides there. Again, this part not important, but anything that's going to be in contact with this part of the guitar. You can see where the neck was before here. Uh, that's a good guide. You can see where it ended here. That's good. So we're going to get plenty of glue all over this. And then we're going to use our glue syringe a little bit later. you got plenty of time to work with hide glue. And you can see that the hole's right there. little hole right there and right there from where I steamed off the neck. So says top. See that? That means the top this way. It slides in this way. If I try to put it in up here, it won't do that. Here. I'm going to put a clamp on this and set it off to the side so it starts to work itself up and get tight a little bit while I do this part right here. I need two hands here. Be right back. There we go. That's much better. An ample supply down in here. Just a little bit on that edge. And then I'm going to go ahead and make a little bit of mash out of the sawdust that I have here to get down in that bottom of that pocket there. Okay, I've made a little slurry down here out of some sawdust in the part that is going to be a void down there in the neck down there and it's full of hide glue again the good part about all this stuff is regardless of what happens you can steam it off later okay I'm gonna pull the clamp off of this now that's had a little bit of time to level out and give myself one more quick coat there and there and there and we'll get this together and clamped up okay now the cool part about this is look at this I have my glue syringe the hot water um, the heater really helps you out here but you you get good control of this by just oozing this in and um, Hide glue dries fairly clear, so we'll be able to touch this up. But anywhere we're seeing that oozing out, I can just take the wet rag and get everything I need. Now, I'm going to do a couple other jobs while I'm here, including the final touch-up on the 1950 Silver Tone Junk Pile before it hits the for sale wall in Ventura. Did you hear that? All right, we're gonna let that dry up and go ahead and cover this prep sticker with the Marvel Mystery Oil can. Get that in place, get that mounted, and then we're gonna put Gibson Deluxe Tuners on it. This thing's gonna be all right before it's over. Alrighty guys, it's the next day, or you would think so because of the change of shirts. You know what, it has been quite a few days on this. So we've got the neck on here, and we're going to pull the clamp now. There we go. That was easy. And pull of our, 
all of our scrap rattus here. And you can see that that neck is bent down a little bit where before it was flat and we had no room. So now I've got an ability to put a beefy bridge on here. And this thing has been glued up and bolted on. And I'll tell you what, it really doesn't need the bolt. But this thing is going into wherever that fast, loud vehicle is going. Again, never, never cease to amaze, amaze me here that somebody puts a muffler on their car that is worth more than the car. So you got a super thruster on a $300 car. Yay. Anyway, where, where was I? So, neck came out great. Um, when I looked down it, you see, it's straight. If it's not, don't give me any comments. But it's nice and straight. We got plenty of room here to put that cool Gretsch pickup. We're kind of sparing no expense on this thing. We're putting Gibson Deluxe tuners on it. We're putting good electronics in it because I want this one to be out on the road and show. So, but again, here's the bottom line. What do you think I paid for this guitar when I picked it up? Yeah, less than that. And so you saw me do a, a, a series of episodes about how to steam off a neck and build a jigs to do all that and a steamer and all that. And that's up on the playlist up there. And so this kind of completes it. But if you put all the time that I took outside of building the tools and the jigs and that kind of stuff and t take a look at just how much time I have into this and given the way it looks, yeah, what's the market for these Frankenstein guitars unless you have somebody that you know knows your work, they can see it, they can play it, and fortunately I've got people that, that can play these things really well, and that's half the battle. Some people can play a rock and make it sound good. So, moral of the story is, if you go into buying guitars with high action, they're going to need a neck reset. And of course, somebody that's out there that thinks that I'm working on Martwins and Gibsons and all that kind of thing, they're in the background going, oh no, you can't do it like that. But I'll tell you what, if you're going to put the time that I put into this guitar and think you're going to sell it and make a lot of money, you're sadly mistaken. So somewhere in the middle of purist and burn it in the in the fireplace is people like you and I. I appreciate you watching my channel. Um, I get a lot of feedback behind the scenes through emails with people telling me I watched your channel. I picked up one of these pretty cheap and I kind of watched through and got to a place where even at the end of it if you only do one you can hang it on the wall and say you know I saved this thing and it plays and it makes me happy. So that's worth a like and a subscribe if you have it now. You're going to see a couple more episodes on this one, but it's going to go across the pond, and it's going to be in Ireland before too long, and I'm going to have, be happy that it's there. The 1940 prep, we're fixing to cover that up with another remnant of a Marvel Mystery Oil can. So, that said, thanks for watching, and I will see you soon.